Fantastic. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Kobe. Got him, dude. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the first ever episode 18 of Good and Fresh, the show where a couple of dudes up to no good make some trouble in your neighborhood. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. If you like that, head over to patreon.com slash good and fresh podcast where you can get this show early along with a bunch of other goodies. If you have no bucks to toss, that's all right. You can still get this show absolutely free every Monday yeah. on youtube.com. Yes, sir. I'm one of your hosts, Charles LaRose, a.k.a. Boom, 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 boom. Chuck Fresh. And next to me, as always, is the one and only Trey Cal L. A K A. Eh. A K A. Trey. Good. This podcast is brought to you by BeGreaterThanEver.com, but we'll talk about that later. For right now, let's get into what is and forever will be Chuck's Thoughts. Chuck's Thoughts. Chuck's Thoughts. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I told you before we started recording, I don't have any thoughts today. We can just have a moment of silence. We could do that. Instead of a moment, can we make it eight moments? Yeah. Okay. We will start right now. Fantastic. Swish. (sighs) Live in eternal light. Absolutely, in the eternal light. Absolutely, live in eternal light. Black Mamba. To the goat that is Kobe Bryant. Yes, sir. And his wonderful daughter, Gianna. Uh, yes, sir. And to everybody else who was, mm-hmm. aff- who was impacted on that plane and everybody who else is affected by the rippling of the news. Uh, Yeah, man. Yeah. Live in power. For sure. Live in power, man. It's uh obviously when we're recording this, you know what happened. Um when we when 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 the news hit, mm-hmm. everybody was in shock. Yeah. Cause it's like no. Yeah. Can't be. Yeah. It's a mistake. Mm-hmm. Um and just the way it rolled out was fucking stupid. It was bad. With the media. It's not great. Terrible job, guys terrible yeah absolutely um and i couldn't me personally like i started to see like i seen like the the fucking the mess social media had became bro social media was a fucking mess it still is yeah it still is a fucking mess yeah and it's it's unfortunate it's sad Mm -hmm. excuse me pardon me that was definitely i mean my body had to do what it had to do i'm sorry yeah um but like, I don't know. Like, I'm in 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 these moments. I don't know how to console people. Um. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard, especially for you know uh, a legend such as Kobe Bryant, right? Or you know anyone of that caliber, right? Um. It it's the same kind of thing, you know, when any huge celebrity passes away mm-hmm. it's it's always sad especially from you know tragic events yeah um you know for a lot of people like you know nipsey was the same kind of way mm-hmm. where even you know even still you know we still feel those ripples mm-hmm. um but uh i don't know me personally i didn't have like the musical tie to Nipsey right. that like I did from the sports tie that you got with that, that I had from the great Kobe Bryant. Um, so yeah, yesterday was, uh, was real tough and it's going to be tough for a while, but 
We'll get through it. What would Kobe do? Exactly, bro. What would Kobe do, bro? He's not he's not coming out of the game, that's for sure. Absolutely not coming out of the game. It was crazy because, like, I had seen that animated short, you know, of, you know, what is it, Deer Basketball? Yeah. With Kobe, and he was like, yo, my, my body, that was the thing that got him out of basketball. Other than that, he would have still been mm-hmm. on the court mm-hmm. schooling niggas. Mm-hmm. And so it's almost reminiscent to, you know, even though it's untimely, but who are, who are we to say it's untimely though? Like that's just you know the human ego wanting yeah. to be like it's not it's not his time. But you know we can't say that. But even his although his body is out of this game that we play, that Mamba mentality is is out there. Mm. That desire for more is out there that desire for not being satisfied i kept i kept finding myself this morning i low-key keep hearing his voice which is crazy to me because i'm not i'm not a huge sports fan yeah but like i can hear his voice telling me like oh you satisfied blah blah blah. and just like damn i gotta keep doing more Mm -hmm. so i'm 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 downloading more so of that that mamba software and i'm all for it yeah, you know I mean, I got you know, I wanna, I wanna go, I wanna go to the to the to the upper echelons of things. That's so why I know what I gotta do. Thanks to people like you know Kobe and Nip, yeah, doing their thing. My thing with with death, bro, because like even even as we're talking about this, I got a homie back home right now who's on life support. Uh, wanna give a huge prayer of love and wholeness to my brother Earl Deshaun Fields and to his mother uh Auntie Judy um bro been a fighter forever bro has been he's had you know uh kidney failure heart failure all types of things and like ever since I've known him but he's never been a person to use that as like a crutch or to be like oh woe is me he's always been damn near the life of the party for a lot of the times and like yesterday, like all of the things happened, and I seen on my Facebook, you know that 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 they have to have that they that they had to put them on life support, and so I I I I gave a solemn prayer, like you know some people like prayers for you, blah right. blah, and they they may or may not do it, but I I sat and actually like gave a solid prayer to this to this solid soul that I like I actually know, mm-hmm. and one of my homies hit me up to tell me that about the situation. And I was like, well, I already, I already talked to him. So I asked him how he was doing. And, you know, he was he said he was fucked up. And he's, like, in the middle of it. And that, in that moment, that's when I realized, it's like, I, I don't know how to, like, console people mm-hmm. around death. Because my understanding of death is totally different than most people's. Because even though it's, it's crazy how death is something that we expect, right? Right. And it's ex- it's universally accepted. It's expected and accepted. But whenever it happens, it always seems to be unexpected mm. and we can't accept it. Mm-hmm. That exactly. So it's like when that happens, you don't want to just tell like I don't want to just tell people like, oh, like they're not gone and it's not. It's not really in our best interest to mourn them in the way that we're doing because we don't really understand the energetics behind that. Right. Because physically they're they're not operating on this plane, but energetically they're still being tied into the mourning, into the grief of the people who are shedding tears. Maybe not, you know, in negativity, but in the way of uh why did you leave type shit. Mm. But it don't seem that way with with what's going on now. It don't seem like you know why did you leave or that and that might and that might be for you know his family that's that's left by left behind, which is unfortunate for his girls to grow up and be like daddy why you leave this and the third, but that's not the case. Mm -mm. But how do you how do you convey that to people without them, you know, not wanting to hear that shit? Yeah, I just I just kind of just let people you know. Go through their process. Yep. Um. It 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 sucks. It definitely sucks because I like I don't even, I don't like seeing people go through, go through the shit that they 
have to go through, but going through it is excuse me, create space to fill it up. Um, going through it is a key indicator that this moment shall pass. Right. Because everybody goes through something. Yep. Depending on your support system, depending on your own inner work, depending on your own state of mind determines on how long it takes for you to go through it. But, you know, on this level of collective effectiveness, it's right. just like, damn. Yeah. But I really like I really feel like, bro, what would Kobe do be on is is like the shit because he would he would he would definitely be like, all right, look, you got this much time yeah. to be upset. Yeah, but get back on, get back in the game. Right. Just because I got subbed out, don't mean you ain't gonna mm-hmm. use the best of these minutes of sh- that you on the court. Mm-hmm. Like use this shit. Yep. We gotta go win this championship. We gotta get this chip. Yep. We, so humanity gotta get this chip. Humanity gotta get this chip. Period. Big bars. Thank you. Yep. Um, but yeah, man. That's 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 kind of where I'm at with it, and 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 I and I hate that like you know, you as my brother kind of feel it more. Yeah. Um, but you know, we're gonna get this chip. Yeah. And we're gonna be at the Rock Nation brunch mm-hmm. next year. Mm-hmm. Facts. Do they? Cause I saw that they had another one. Do they just have one like at all the big events like, award shows? I don't know, bro. Okay. I have no idea, but I've seen people that like. I I ain't gonna say I know them, but like I know them right. from Detroit and shit like that. Sure. Um, but I see them at the brunch. I'm like, bro, I'm about to be at this brunch, bro. Mm. I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like anything can happen in a year, and I got great ass. I got. I'm 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 clear on how I'm gonna water my seeds. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. That, that's a Good. whole another conversation, but we can have it if we want to have it. But yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so yeah. Yesterday was rough. Yeah. Again, it'll be rough for a while, but we'll get through it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um well shit, man. Should we get in the dripper skip or should I recap my weekend? Um Yeah, I mean you can yeah. Okay, get cool. Into that. Why not? Okay, I'll get into this weekend. So over the weekend, I went up to Rock Island, Illinois. Mm-hmm. Uh, this guy forgot. He should have came, but I you did. know, I did forget. I fucked up, guys. It was bro. Fucked up bad. It was dope. Yeah. It was dope. Um, but anyway, I was up at Rock Island, Illinois. Shout out to Aubrey, aka Obs. Period. And every other artist who was up there. Who was up there? Uh. Pac-Man, aka Round the Round Hero, uh Isaiah, um Taj, Orlando Orlando Coolridge, uh Two Nun. I think that was it. Poor Bill. Uh shout out to DJ King Supreme. Um and everybody who was just everybody who showed up, everybody who rocked out, everybody oh, Crunk Chocolate who hosted. Shout out to everybody, bro. That, that it was a it was a real good look. Um the way so it was Alb's project release party. Okay. Called he he dropped the project called Sensei of Syllables. Make sure you check that out. It's on anywhere music is streaming. A U B S period Sensei of Syllables. Go check out the brother. Um, oh yeah, I forgot uh Free Power. They were another band, they were another act that was performing as well. Um and uh so the way the it was set up, he broke it down into rounds. Mm-hmm. So instead and so instead of like the traditional uh the traditional show where an artist go, go goes up, does their set, and then, you know, either can leave or stick around and watch everybody else. But if P- if that particular artist brought people with them, so to speak. Most times, after they perform, motherfuckers get on, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but at this event, everybody was dope. Oh, I forgot about uh, Jabez. I'm shouting everybody out. I'm trying to make sure that I can get everybody their recognition. Um, 
But all of these artists and MCs were dope, bro. Spitters, mm-hmm. bars, good content. Like, it, this was no fuck. This was no fuck shit at all. Mm-hmm. All authentic spits, good music on deck. Nice. And shout out to the Rise Talks where it was at because we didn't even know that they served food. But after the show, my baby got something that was vegan. I got a mango matcha smoothie. Ooh, sounds good. The bowl and the smoothie. Mm-hmm. Banging, bro. Mm-hmm. Slapped. Like pimps do when the rents do. Slapping, bro. Mm-hmm. Shit was amazing. I was blown away. Shout out to Heather. I remember the bar- bartender. The la- and, I, and I don't know the lady who didn't have a voice. I, I didn't get her name because you know she didn't have her voice, whatever. But okay. But anyway, so there was rounds to the show. Yep. I'm going all over the place with it. But there, there was rounds to the performances. So like round one, mm-hmm. every artist performed one song. All did like two songs. Uh, each each round, he added like more songs, whatever. This is project release part, sure. so you can yeah. do what you want. Yeah. Um, I should have wore the shirt, by the way. Can you grab me my shirt? It's in the office. Um. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so round one, round two, round three, three rounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, first round I did alone. Okay. People was fucking with it. So like before I even went up, Crunk Chocolate had uh, thank you. This is uh, what's this? I like what's this? Like I don't know. <laughs> this is the official Sensei of Syllables oh. merch. I like it. Get you some from the homie Obs. I'm about to throw this motherfucker on in a second. But uh first when when Crunk Chocolate introduced me, he was like, uh, give it up for Trey Good. And nobody had said anything but, you know, mm-hmm. the one person who sure, sure, knew sure. me. Right, right, right. And then he was like, make some noise for Trey Good. Mm-hmm. And more people was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. It's like, right. like shit. Right. Like I got this it's it's recorded. We're gonna put out put out the video soon. Um, it might more than likely it'll be out before this podcast. But uh what happened? Oh yeah, I got up there and I was like, "It's okay, man. I'm the I'm the new guy." And then like, I started telling the not really jokes, but I just was interacting with the crowd, bro. I hope you weren't telling jokes, man. I'm, when I get on stage, bro, I'm, I'm like, I love being, I yeah. love being on, bro. Yeah, yeah. There's a vibe. It is definitely a vibe. You know, I know, bro. I've seen I, it. I'd be, I'd be in a different space. It, I love it, but um. But yeah, so I get up there. I told him that my doodle twinkle, like, like the Dave Chappelle. We had mentioned like it was it was a Dave Chappelle reference. Okay. The most baller shit ever. Right. Yeah. Okay. And other people knew about it. I was like my doodle twinkle. But anyway. Okay. <laughs> uh, so like, I start doing alone and like instantly, got him. Mm. Instantly got. And then when nice. I, I I, yes, <laughs> I met with um uh. A, pret- a homie named Daly Okay uh, And he was like bro You got a gift mm. And you know We I'm, we, we gonna see what's gonna pan out With the networks that have been activated Sure And we just gonna keep this shit rocking bro Like it was It was a vibe bro Nice It was a good good vibe bro Like And I'm excited Like I'm excited to see The, the music scene That's kind of It's like Iowa, Illinois Yeah um, but it also kind of like lit something to me to start really activating the hub here in mm-hmm. Fairfield mm-hmm. with hip hop music and more urban things because there's nobody else at the helm of it. And I'm like the OG in the city, which is fucking stupid and silly to yeah, say. Yeah. Yeah. That didn't sound right. But I am it. though. Like if, yeah. if you know, <laughs> you kind of know. Yeah. Ugh. I'm about to be, I'll be 32 by the time y'all see this. Old. My birthday is the 30th mm-hmm. We record these on The days we record them And it's not the 30th Anyway uh, But yeah bro like The show was dope She's losing her mind over there I know Um, It's gonna be the La Rose year the, 32 Crazy It's my magic year bro Okay It's my magic year Like th- this first month has been weird for me Honestly You're Very weird Very weird yeah, 2020 yeah. is strange, very strange. It's gonna be nuts. Yeah, um, I bumped in. This is a whole nother. Did I finish off the the Rostock story? 
No. Continue. I didn't. So I'm gonna finish it off. Yes. I did my three rounds, bro. It was amazing. It was awesome. Um, people was vibing. People fucked with me. I networked with a lot of people. Um, I'm happy to be stepping into, you know, what I'm really supposed to be doing, bro. Music is like when I mention I have the water. The, I know how to water my my seeds. Right. Music is the water. Right. I've right. been oblivious to the fact that music is the thing that makes. My heart sing, right? Which is silly. Music is the I thing. Music is the thing that like opens up all the doors for me, bro. Mm. With like music opened up this friendship. Right. You feel me? Yeah. Had this had like music. She fell in love with me from, from music. Probably, probably not. I don't know. You fucked up. Yeah, she did. Um, I'm joking. I'm <laughs> joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, but yeah. So like. F- facts and you're dope. Like the last song I did was perspective. Uh, if it ain't adding, it's subtracting. Anything, yeah. and I was like, yeah, my wife did it. People was like, oh, woo, woo, woo. and then like afterward, motherfuckers was coming up to her. It's like, you did that beat. Mm. They was trying to network with her. Right. She's like, you need to come correct. I need the fat bag. <laughs> yeah. She was. I was hungry. Yeah, she was hungry <laughs> and tired. <laughs> But uh, so yeah, man. Like, shout out to everybody at at, at the Roz Talks at the Alb Sensei Syllables Project Release Party, man. I really appreciate all of that love. I look forward to continuous con- to continue to build and cultivate friendships, networks, partnerships, businesses, whatever with you guys and whoever I network with in the future, man. Let's it's it's time to get 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 it. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, so back to the watering of the seeds through music. Right. Anytime I do something with music, bro, the universe starts busting it wide open for me. Okay. It does. I like that terminology. All right. It's fine. Go ahead, buzz it wide open for me, universe. Sure. You feel me? Do your thing. Your thing. Uh, So, like, I don't, I, I can't remember what, like, really brought my attention. Like, bro, music is... Where the fuck do you get everything from? Supposed to be. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like you you try Oh, I had put on my Facebook, like, is you doing what you love or what you think you're supposed to do? A couple of days ago. And when I was asking that question, I was asking it to myself, I was asking it to everybody else. Um, the thing that I love to do is make music. Right. But I often have these blocks, which I realized more so recently is my fear of failure and my fear of success. Um, which have kept me sandwiched between a rock and a hard place Mm. for longer than I have been aware of and longer than I can even remember more than likely my whole entire life. Mm. But knowing where I'm at allows for me to be more mindful of how to maneuver through all of that. Mm. So when I do get, you know, that fear of not wanting to fuck up and be a perfectionist, it's like, nah, nigga, put this shit out. Do yeah. it. Yeah. You you can re, you can refine it along the way. Um, when the fear of success pops up and it's like, oh, you got more responsibility on you. Uh, I don't. I got to do it all by myself. Like you've never had to do it all by yourself. We want you to win. We're going to create avenues for you to win. Just show up mm-hmm. and get better in it. Mm-hmm. Like oh, okay. I've been learning more and more about surrendering. Mm-hmm. Surrendering and letting go. Um. And it's allowing for me to really, really show up authentically. Right. You know what I mean? Really in, start embodying my pillars of being. I don't even want to say my pillars of being, the pillars of being. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Really practicing what I preach and uh, and noticing how this gift of music and my message in the music is quote unquote. I don't even want to say that shit, but I'm going to say it anyway. Is my meal ticket? But it's it's my what you say? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal. Yeah, it's it's my it's, it's my Rock Nation brunch ticket. Yeah. Um. So yeah, man, I'm I'm excited about that, and like I just been I going through my voice notes. Got hella voice notes, good ass stems mm-hmm. to build off of. Mm-hmm. Got 
three, four records with Hemi that ain't seen the light of day. Right. That are dope. Mm-hmm. Um. So it's just like, bro, let's let's start churning it out. Butter, baby. Mm-hmm. So, in the words that we always say to Mr. Josh, yeah, Hollywood, uh huh, aka J Methods, what? hashtag, yeah, drop the tape. The because tape. you see, story time. Story time. Uh, Mr. Josh, yeah, has a somebody's knocking at the door. There is, um, has a catalog of music that has not seen the light of day mm. and or most people's ears. Mm. I am the only living soul mm. to have a majority of that catalog. Mm. Not all of them, but a quality majority of them. Right. So I always make the joke that someday... I'm going to someday I'm going to just randomly oh. hashtag drop the tape and then the streets are going to be just absolutely on fire. Come in here playoff P just showed up. What's <laughs> going <laughs> on, <laughs> big cat? Our homie uh Paul Moorhead Jr just walked into the studio. You can't see him. He's off camera, but he he's definitely B greater than ever mafia mafioso. <laughs> can I sit in? Yeah, oh, definitely you can sit in, bro. Look at this setup. Um, yes. Cool, cool, okay. cool. Uh, so yeah, so drop the tape. My, that's my story about drop the tape. You're gonna drop the tape, or is J Meth is gonna drop the tape? Nah, he won't drop the tape. So he eventually, won't. why not? J, why ain't you dropping the tape, bro? What did you waiting for? Yeah, I know why I was waiting, but well, one. All of these songs that are on said tape it's are like now, hella old. yeah, are now very old. But it it, it kind of, eh. <laughs> so if he came in now, yeah, wooey, wooey, big bars. So wait, so like even if they are old, yeah, they knew to everybody who ain't heard them. Hundred percent. Secondly, true, they might be in the right time. Because mm, listen, I, uh, listen to this man, Josh. If I I wrote songs. 10 years ago mm-hmm. that people are hearing now and they're vibing with 10 years ago, maybe not 10, like seven to 10 years ago alone. Yep. Actually alone is probably within the last four, five years. Still a gap, still a gap of time, but yep. it's timeless. Like when you start, when and I'm pretty sure you make timeless music, bro. It doesn't matter when you created it. All that matters is that you created it with a message and it has, it's going to touch whoever it touches. Mm-hmm, definitely. So put that shit out. Cause I'm, I'm a fucking product of just sitting on it, trying to like wait till the right time, uh, hoping that I can get the, the right video shot or get the right mix for it or that I don't have the right things for it. No mm-hmm. people putting out bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit mm-hmm. and it is flying, bro. Winning Grammys. Winning. Fuck the Grammys. Uh, I agree with that 100%. Fuck the Grammys. Fuck the Grammys also, bro. fuck the Grammys for being on last night. Y'all trash. Y'all big trash. We're talking right now, Grammys and anybody else out there bro, who's so going to do an award show. All the smoke All with the, the smoke. Grammys. Number one. Fuck the Grammys. Fuck em. Number two, you have the Grammys last night at the Staples Center. How dare you? How dare you? Also, you honored Nipsey and Kobe. So, we respect you for that. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, it was Alicia Keys and everybody else who went up there and like really like paid their respects. It wasn't the Grammys. They were just like, oh, we're here and we got to do this. I mean. So, Grammys, fuck you. Fuck you, Grammys. Y'all don't fuck Have up. your awards somewhere else. Diddy done told y'all y'all got 365 days. Mm-hmm. Diddy told y'all y'all got a year yeah. to get y'all shit together. I think that's some ball shit. Diddy go tells the fucking Grammys like, hey, we ain't gonna keep tap dancing for you Bro, motherfuckers for too much longer. We've been telling the Grammys. But at the Grammys, bro, 
accepting is a, a, accepting is a word. It's like, bro, yeah. I want to say this with the most love and respect. Mm-hmm. Y'all got 365 days. It's yeah. like, shit. Yeah, I saw a little like the snippet little- of what he was saying. Respect to Puff I, Absolutely I, yeah. I think they just came from That, that Rock Nation brunch Feeling sure. like Hey listen Sure they probably had A few mimosas With the with the ace of spades <laughs> Sure And it's just like You know what Fuck all this shit yeah. Let's build our own Yeah My favorite is when Jay shows up to an award show And they have like Champagne or whatever At the oh, table And he just says like Get this shit the fuck out of here And then they just bring in Bottles of spade I'm like Bro Jay That's boss Boss yeah, ain't nothing to it. Mm-hmm. Oh man, um, but yeah, water, water, water your seeds, bro. Like, and pff, Jay, bro, Jay, you, you are in rap. I was about to say rap, nigga, heaven, and I just said it. You are in music central. You in L- in Cali somewhere? Not L A. You're out there with the people. You yeah. got the connects. What are you doing? Yeah. What you doing, bro? Mm-hmm. What you doing? I think what it is, what is it? Is that he's he gonna already leave a for sure. he's already so Hollywood mm. that if he like really blew up and like became a rapper, bro, be a rapper, bro. Like, yeah, but he would be so Hollywood. <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> hey man, look, like we couldn't be friends anymore. I mean, he that I'm pretty sure y'all would still be friends, no. and he would more than Too likely Hollywood. just be like, look, bro, boss your life up. True. He, I mean, he definitely already says that. Boss your life up, man. Look, I, f- man, I fuck with Josh. Yeah, that's big, bro. I fuck with Josh. Hey, look, drop some music, or if you don't drop the music, just license it to me. I ain't got, I have no shame with uh recording other artists' dope shit, mm-hmm. and rapping it. Mm-hmm. I haven't done it, mm-hmm. but I'm open to do it. Yeah, I don't know how that would work. Though. I'm open to see, it. See, here's the thing. Like, if you started rapping Mm -hmm. something that Josh wrote. Right. That's big bars. Bro, hey, listen, don't do... People would be like, "Mm, don't play with me, bro. Trey didn't write this. Don't play with me. Mm -hmm. Don't play with me. And then they'd have to hit you with the Drake thing. I mean, listen, bro. (laughs) I ain't worried. Like, it's an art, like... I'm kidding. I know you're kidding. (laughs) But uh, art is, is, is crazy, like, especially music. Especially sure. hip hop, especially rap. Yeah, it's so competitive when it's it's not. It though. shouldn't be. Yeah, it like, shouldn't be. It definitely. shouldn't be at all. Like yeah. everybody is creating from their own experience and perspective. Yeah. How can you compare that to somebody else's experience perspective? Yeah, you can compare skill level, right? But at the end of the day, you the way you sh- the way you paint mm-hmm. ain't how the other person paint. Like you can get, you could blow the fuck up by doing just splatter blots. Yeah, we got an artist. I'm, I'm picking up on this vibe. <laughs> <laughs> Paul is a is a is a dope ass artist, graphic artist, story bro. He's he's ill, mm-hmm. ill, and he's in here meditating. I'm picking up on all these vibes. <laughs> but your 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 art form is your art form. We all share it. Comedians don't sell it, tell the same jokes. If they do, then they get kind of like washed. Yeah. Um, but everybody has their own perspective and their own experience and how they convey it. Why do we in hip hop want to make it so competitive? Because we have rap battles. I get that. That's cool. Yeah. But outside of that, like make records. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Make your art your art. Yeah. That's why it's hard for a lot of rap uh, rap battlers to like transcend into being actual artists, right. even though they are artists, yeah. they just have this, this st- mindset yeah. of like, I got to do this myself instead of being an artist and being like, Hey, you make dope shit. Let's make dope shit. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I, I ain't, I don't care, but I haven't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say that, uh, I want ghost writers. I don't need it. Mm-hmm. Um, would I like collaborators? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm cool with collaborating. Yep. I have no problem with that. Yep. Um, but yeah, bro. Jay, drop that tape. Yeah, I'm dropping. Or I'm at dropping least like a get track. Dude, a feature or something. Oh yeah, give me a feature for sure. Cause I need it. Yeah, I want it. I need 
I'm hungry. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like, you make a song and then just have, like, Joss as a feature on it. Oh, that is... Yes, let's do that. Yeah. I'm all for that. Emmanuel, that's my project. That's what but I'm doing. see, talking. here's the thing. Would it be, like, an Eminem and Royce the 5'9 kind of thing on this music to be murdered by? Or you'd come in, you're all right. You're fine. But then Josh would come in, just flame throwering it down. Just mm-hmm. a Charizard out here, just, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> just, just flamethrower and everything. One hit KOs. You know what I mean? Critical, uh, critical attacks. Yes. Exactly. <coughs> I mean, hey, man. <laughs> um, you know, hey, listen, man. I'll, I'll get my Blaziken on if I need to. I get my Entei on if I need to. Sure. You feel me? I I might send him the verse first, and he be like, he send me back to super fire, and I'd be like, let me Uh-oh. get back in the yeah. booth. <laughs> let, let me, me get, get the eraser out. Yeah, let me get back in the booth. Yeah. Um, but I, bro, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, I don't, I don't think none of like I ain't gonna say that. I ain't go. I don't know. I don't know. I can't tell you <laughs> honestly. I can't tell you because I was about to be like, you know, I ain't, I ain't trying to. Be, I don't know, bro. Like yeah. if dog is. Snapping on that bitch Uh huh I'm definitely gonna go back in Sure And add another verse to it I don't blame Or you. just shift it out Now When you write music mm-hmm. Because Me Being around you You freestyle quite a bit mm-hmm. You know Just for shits and gigs You yeah. just, Um When you like Are actually writing Do you like sit down And write And write out like the whole thing Like word for word Exactly what you're gonna say Do you kinda like Maybe make like little bullet points or something. Um, is it just Jay Z style, just all in your head, whatever you're thinking? It's more so that it's more so me feeling, okay, not feeling out the beat. But <clears throat> okay, so like I'm, my creative process is still I haven't honed my creative process. I, sure. That's what I really got to do. I really got to sit back and hone my creative process. Mm-hmm. But I'm more apt at freestyling. Or just not necessarily freestyling music, but kind of like feeling into the music mm. um, and creating my, my my verses through that. And so like I'll rap some bars in my like in my head and sometimes I'll just like keep rapping them and add to them. Mm. And like if I need to, if I feel like I would do a, I'd, I would do better at um, writing things down, I would start it off in that fashion of freestyling to a beat and then and then I'll go back and like probably write in some stuff because like I'm about to do that with uh the I'm on it song because I got I say some dope shit and then I get into like but I know kind of what I want to say so that's how I write you know what I mean and that and that's and that was one of the things that kind of fucked me up for a while so I was like how am I supposed to write how am I supposed to make music it's like bro can't nobody really tell you about your creative process but you right and figuring it out what's up baby Use my voice notes. She, yeah, you are big on the voice notes. I got so many fucking voice notes. Yeah. Right. Right. And then you like hear exactly how you want it to say it. That's yeah. smart. Yeah. And that's one of the things like I I didn't normally do. Like I'll do it mm-hmm. and then I'll just have them in there forever. Right. But I've I've probably wrapped some of the coldest shit mm-hmm. and I can't, I don't know where it's at. Mm-hmm. It's probably in the phones that I've lost. Right. And I just didn't do because I was just sitting on shit. I was mm-hmm. in that rock in a hard place, not right, really, right. you know, on my mamba shit. You feel me? Right. But now it's like the marathon has to continue. Yep. And I have to be on my mamba shit. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Emmanuel coming this year. You heard it here first. Absolutely. And don't take that name either. The, I mean, they can take it, but it's my middle name, so you know. Nope. Don't take it. Do what you want. Yeah. My name is my name. Boy. Yeah. So, yeah. What's up? What we on? Um, I mean, I guess we'll get into this little uh, this little segment of Drip or Skip. Okay. If you want to do that. Let's do some Drip or Skip. Okay. Fantastic. Um, all right. So, Drip or Skip, of course, segment where I, Charles, bring Trey into... The world of fashion and shoes and all sorts of fun stuff yeah. that he doesn't know about. Um, today, though, of course, I had to keep with the theme 
of the great Kobe Bryant. Um, Mamba. So I have three shoes. Uh, the first one that we're going to start with. Uh, let me, hang on. Let me move this up so you don't know what the name of it is. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So this is going to be the first one here. I like those. I'm dripping in those. Fantastic. They remind me of Kyrie's a little bit. The ones I wear. Just a little bit. Okay. I can kind of see that because mm-hmm. the, little, the little parts right here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so these are the Adidas KB8s. Okay. Now... When Kobe was a rookie in oh. 1996, 97 season. Okay. He was with Adidas. Oh. Yeah. Um, so they made two shoes. The first ones were not good. No? Not really. I mean, personally, I kind of like them, mm-hmm. but... The In, overall consensus. Was. Yes, the overall consensus is that they are big trash. Mm. So then they came out with these, which right. are what we now refer to as the crazy eights. Mm. And they come in all sorts of different colorways, all types of stuff. I do not own a pair. Mm. Maybe Yet. I should. Maybe I should. Um, They did come out with like some sort of like pack or something like a few years ago. And I really wanted to get them, but they were like some special limited thing, and I just wasn't able to. Mm. Um, but yes, these are the Crazy Eights by Adidas. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you're going to drip in them, because yeah. they're dope. They are. Super dope. Um, so, second one are going to be these ones. Yeah. I'm dripping in those, too. Okay. Those are like my favorite colors. Sure. White, gold, black. Yep. Makes sense. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple other pictures though before you before you make this. Okay. It's a real thing. Uh da, 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 da. so you got that mm-hmm. one. But then see so you got That's the, the inside. other oh it's the inside. Oh or I think because like you come down here. Oh see what I'm saying? It's like a half and half sort of thing. I like it though. Okay. I do wish that the you know that it was on the side. That it the whole yeah, thing yeah, yeah. was this graphic. Yeah. Or no 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 that the the graphic was on the other side of the other shoe. So you know on the yeah, outside. Yeah, 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 on the outside of that shoe. Right. But I got gotcha. you. Nevertheless, I'm still and I like the two different tongues. Mm-hmm. I like that. Okay. Drip. Um so these are the Kobe five protos. Mm. Which are coming out February something. Oh, they they not even out. February seventh is when they come out. No, uh, these were planned to come out, and um, and yeah, so they come out February seventh. Um, they've done like a few kind of like throwback Kobe's. Mm-hmm. Um, and they all usually are pretty successful. Um, these ones though, as you said, I like the colors to them. Personally, I probably wouldn't drip only because I would want the graphic to be the whole shoe or like you said, have it be like on both the outsides or both the insides, something like that. But like the half and half thing, eh, it just doesn't do it for me. Mm. Especially when one is on the outside and one is on the inside. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know what you're doing with that one, Nike. <laughs> um, but they always make a bunch of like super dope ones. Um, this is to commemorate his last championship, mm. which he won in 2010. Um, so I mean, there's a whole bunch of numbers on them, sayings, all sorts of stuff like that. Very cool. I like them. Glad, glad Nike's doing it. Shout out to Nike. The last ones okay. are going to be these ones. I don't know if I would drip those. Okay. I don't know. Why is that? I don't know. They look like a football jersey. Kind of look yeah. like a football jersey. A football jersey. Or like. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. No, I'm not dripping in those. Okay. 
These are the Kobe ones. Mm. Now, this is also one of the protos. I believe proto is kind of just like their sort of like retro sort of thing, but with mm-hmm. Kobe's instead of calling them retros for whatever reason. Um, so they've done them in like a bunch of different colorways and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, the ones though, the Kobe ones by Nike, mm-hmm. which was in 2006. Oh, six. Yep. Um, are usually one of like the top ones that they do. They've done a whole bunch of ones. Really? Yep. Mm. Um, these ones are called the last seconds because he wore them in the 2006 playoffs and they were playing the Phoenix Suns mm. and he hit a game winner on them in overtime. Fire. As Kobe did many times. So that's what these are. Last seconds. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't I don't like that part. The front part. This this yeah, toe box yeah, part. Yeah, the toe like box the, part. The purpley Yeah. Whatever that is. Yeah. Plastic kind of thing. Yeah, I'm not no. I understand. Um I would a hundred percent drip in them. I'm pretty sure, Josh, who we were talking about earlier, mm-hmm. another shout out. Look at this fucking guy. This celebrity guy. over here. Pretty sure he owns these. I should have got him. Should have got them. Uh, came out and didn't get them. Mm, fucked up. Mm. Um, but they're awesome. They're great. Mm. Nike, keep making them. Keep doing what you're yeah. doing, Nike. Um, and that is all for Dripper Skip. Womp, 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 womp. Keeping it in the family. Nice. Yep. Um. Oh shit. Do we? Mm-hmm. Pick up the game that never ends. I mean, let's do it so that eventually it would end. It will end. Let's see. But I don't know if it really will. Because yeah, to be we, quite honest, we'll find out. So you know what the game that never ends, right? This time, me and Chuck Fresh here, mm-hmm. aka Charles LaRose, aka he's going to lose again, uh, is playing Mexican Juan. Mm-hmm. You know, not to be copyright infringing and anything like that. You know. Uh, last week we s- left off with the yellow tres, right? And it was on me, right? Um, s- so here's the thing <laughs> usually, I will like rewatch our last episode, uh-huh. and then I'll know, you know, especially for this fucking shit. I'll know <laughs> whose turn it was on. Yeah. But because this weird thing happened with my phone, I wasn't able to watch it all. Uh, I have don't. no fucking idea. Okay, whose wait, turn wait, wait. <laughs> Let's review the tapes. Okay? Oh, geez. Uh, this is silly. Yep. So while Trey is reviewing the tapes, I'm gonna let you guys know. Um, I. Am not confident about this game. <laughs> now, <laughs> I was very confident about Connect Between Three and Five. Still lost because <laughs> that's just a game that I've been decent at my whole life. You know, still lost. Yeah, it wasn't great. So this game, <laughs> uh, Mexican Juan, big game in the Larose household, but Big Mama Lou. Definitely just a murderer at oh, this Oh, word? Game. Murderer at this Tell game. Tell Mama Lou I want to smoke. What's up? Big Mama Lou is a murderer at this game. Um, But me, you know, I'm, I'm, eh, eh, I've been all right. I'm but I'm not going to, I mean, I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm a prodigy at the Mexican one. You know what I mean? I'm definitely a prodigy at the Mexican one, bro. So I'm... Not feeling very confident about this. And then <laughs> you had to come out and hit me with like these skips and all these reverses. I don't think I got a turn for like two episodes. It's rough out here, guys. It is not good. Uh, I'm I'm trying to find it though. Jesus Christ. Uh if you aren't subscribed to the Good and Fresh Podcast, make sure you do that. Shout out to everybody who subscribed. But if you aren't a patron of the Good and Fresh podcast, make sure you do that too. Because mm-hmm. uh, you get the episode early. Yeah. And you get a s- 
exclusive. Yep. For just a dollar a month, you get an exclusive episode. And this month's, ooh, you don't want to miss that one. You don't. You don't. Mm -mm. What the fuck? Big reveals. A lot of, a lot of laughs. Fuck it, I can't find it. You just go first. We gonna let you go first. All right. If you say so. Now, just on the record, if I do come back and win this, uh huh, you're gonna be like, oh, you shouldn't have went first that fucking game. I, you know, I look. I let you go first during uh, what was that? Connect between three, three and, five. and five. That's actually very true. And who still came out on was. Top? Was not your downfall, <laughs> like I thought it would be. Uh, All right. So yeah. So in that case, I'm going to do something unheard of. It in actually the game. is my my turn. I just realized. But continue, continue, continue. I really, I just realized it's my turn. Because if let's see, boom. Oh, actually, no. You threw that out. So it's. It would still be my turn. Okay. But you go. I'll allow it. Yeah. Sure. All right. Yellow one. Mm. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Because it still coincides with what I was going to do anyway. Okay. So okay. I'll, okay. it's totally fine. No harm, no foul. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is do something, like I said, unheard of. Uh oh! In the game of Mexican Juan, this might be a world first. World p- 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 premiere. Oh yeah, like they do at E3. World, world premiere. P- 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 yeah, and then you get to watch some fucking stupid thing. Trailer or some shit. Yeah, yeah. some fucking Un- my hero choking blast eighty seven. Nope, nah. You get to see stuff Man. like Blythe being added to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, another Fire Emblem player. Oh yeah, we didn't talk about that. You be big mad about it? I'm not another big. Another guy with I'm, the sword. <sighs> Neat. I'm not big mad about it. It's just like, bro, you it's know, so many more people you can add. Put put a pin in that. Okay, we're gonna put a pin we'll in get, that. We'll get back to it. Uh, so this is the move that I'm going to make. What you doing? We're gonna go with the blue one. <gasps> Shout out. To big nip okay we're putting the blue one on the board okay i like how we ended we ended with the blue one yep of mexican one switched it all up on you shit what the fuck do i got oh my god uh oh put a wrench in he put a wrench in my monkey in my, in my monkey plans <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> yep sure did <laughs> Yeah, no. Nah. So that's the game that never ends. Maybe it yep. maybe it'll end in like two episodes. Blue one. Three episodes. Uh I have three cards left. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's yeah well I didn't get a fucking turn for two episodes, <laughs> so you know, I feel like I'm doing all right. <laughs> yeah, uh tune in next week to see Trey Good win. Mexican Juan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, do you only have one left? Uh if I only had one left and I didn't say Uno, you right, could say exactly. exactly. But I I don't have oh, okay. one left. Okay. I know how. Do we? I am just I just said the word that I wasn't supposed to say. Oh, I see. Yeah, I guess you would have to say Juan. Juan. Yeah. Juan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but no, I got dos. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> how we doing over here, Paul? Good man. Stella. Yeah. yeah. Stella. Hey, thank you for that. Stealing of the space. Mm-hmm. Um, so now to take the pin out of this conversation. Oh. So you're big mad about them adding another person with a sword. Again, not big mad. However, little mad, little, little mad. disappointed, little, little disappointed. Now my question was because they put in your boy Banjo Kazooie in the game, right? Did they? Yeah, with Banjo Kazooie. Oh, you said Banjo. I'm thinking of Crash Bandicoot. My bad. Yeah. If they put Crash Bandicoot in the game, I might actually play it. Um, now, because Nintendo is getting real buddy buddy with uh, Microsoft, uh-huh. and Microsoft is like, hey, you know, platforms. They kind of have this this mindset where they're like, you know, platforms aren't going to matter. 
We just want you to play games wherever you want to play our games at. Cool, great, no big deal. Right. So how long until we get a big, giant Xbox person in Smash Bros? Like uh, Master Chief or something? Like shit? Master Chief. Exactly right. Uh, I don't know. That might happen soon because I know they got like five or six more DLCs right. that they're about to add. Now, uh, I was listening to, of course, my favorite podcast, Kind of Funny. Uh-huh. They were talking about either, how how would you feel about this? Okay. Either Master Chief mm-hmm. or your boy. Your boy. Sora. From Kingdom Hearts. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cause he'd be another sword character that they really love, yeah. but you'd be able to do it a different way, you know, put some spin on it. Right. Maybe Mickey comes out of nowhere and just says, Ho ho, the power of friendship and then you'll <laughs> fucking do some ultimate smash thing, you know? Goofy's over there. Save me. Yeah, uh I'm going with sword, bro, off top. Off top, I'm going with Sora. I'm going with Sora, bro. May your heart be your guiding key, bro. Right. Off top. I don't know. I mean, he definitely wouldn't be able to do... Well, I mean, it's Nintendo and Smash Bros. They can do... Well... Yeah, but it's also Disney, so, like, they definitely probably wouldn't want anybody, you know, fighting in there or stuff. Why not? It's... What? Because it's Disney. But Disney has fighting games. Oh, well, they have Kingdom Hearts. I mean, yeah, kind of, I guess. I don't know. So I'm pretty. I don't know. I and feel it's not, like it's not Disney, like a it's not like a blood gory fighting 100%, 100%, game. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So I, I think it can. Uh, maybe I think they can pull it off. It'd be that would be a real big get though. Yeah. Uh, big get. Would it? Huge. Because think huge. Mm mm mm. Okay. Let's think about this. Okay. So We're brainstorming here. Yes. I like it. Disney had those Mickey games. Epic Mickey. Yeah. Okay. What what system were they on? I have no idea. The Wii okay. and Wii U. Okay. They were Nintendo exclusives. Oh. Uh-huh. So okay. I'm thinking mm-hmm. that Disney and Nintendo already have a, a good little, little relationship. Little buddy buddy kind of thing. Okay. And so them getting Sora, mm-hmm. which ironically enough, Sora is the name of their like is, is the name of Super Smash Brothers company. Like if after you beat the game or whatever, you shoot all the little car- credits and whatever, okay. the last name is Sora. So, it's not too far off, bro. Interesting. Yeah, they're going to add Sora in there. That'd be cool. That'd be dope. Yeah. I'd be... I'm already hella good, so, you know. (sighs) Yeah. But then, you wouldn't be able to use your best bro, Cloud. Cloud? I mean... Switch to Sora. I mean, I switch it up all the time now. (laughs) For real, bro. (laughs) Baby, who do I use? And Super Smash Brothers. But mostly cloud. <laughs> Terry Brad, Terry not Terry Bradshaw, but Terry from uh, Terry Br- <laughs> Terry Bradshaw, the <laughs> NFL legend. <laughs> Terry <laughs> Terry Bro Terry Bogart, that's his name. Right. Uh, oh, and he's <laughs> Terry Bogart is the one from uh, Street Fighter, right? No, no, no from Fatal Fury, uh, King of Fi- King of Fighters. King of Fighters, my bad. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, who else? We fit trainer. Don't do cloud. that. Cloud. Always cloud. Every now and then I throw in a homie Ken. Every now and then, which is like maybe one round. I mean, I'm still going to win. Ike. I don't know. I feel like Cl- I mean, 90% of the time you're picking cloud. I mean, uh, yeah, N- not as much anymore. Ter- yeah, Terry has gotten a lot a lot of burn lately, bro. Okay. Hero has gotten some burn too. One okay. of the newer DLCs. Yeah. I, nah, I wouldn't even say Joker because I barely ever use Joker. I would use right. a me character before I use Joker. Yeah. I I I fucks I fucks with the me characters, but yeah. I'm not big mad at them for adding another Fire Emblem character in. I'm just saying. There there's, were better options. There's better options, and there's already like there six. There would have been a lot cooler people. That Fire you Emblem get. characters. Right. You got Roy, Marth, Lucia, fucking Ike, yep. uh, the dragon person. Pff, 
It's like seven people yeah, it's from too, Fire Emblem in the game. Too many. Already. And they all have swords. And magic. Well, yeah. actually, just Ro- oh, Robin. I like Robin. Robin's pretty dope. I'll use Robin every now and then, too. All right. Nah. Um, but, yeah, who would you want to be in Super Smash Brothers? Who would y'all, who would y'all want to be in Super Smash Brothers? I th- mean, I think I've said this before. Banjo? Probably Crash Bandicoot. Oh, Banjo. Or oh, or I said uh, Jack and Daxter. Oh, yeah. if they got if they got Jack and Daxter in there, hundred percent, I'm playing that game. Yeah. Oh, that's a great one. These are the hard hitting journalistic questions that we like here, Paul. Which Jack would I put in there? Mm. Mm. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Jack two would be good. Hmm. But I feel like for a younger audience, because I mean we're talking about Smash Bros here. Yeah, man, bro, up with Smash Bros. Absolutely, bro. That's true. That's true. It's absolutely, it's a millennial game. Nintendo 64 was like 15 years. It's true. And okay, they got you. Make good points here, Paul. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Jack Two then, mm. definitely, because Jack Two is like the seminal game. It's a lot of people's favorites, even though Jack Three was a better game. And then yeah, and then when you do like their ultimate thing, he could turn into Dark Jack, and then he would just fucking murder people. So mm. Nintendo, make it happen. Sakurai, make it happen. What you finna say, Hamlet? Let's hear it. Kid Goku, add Son Goku. That'd be cool. Into it, I put this on Twitter a while ago. Yeah, that would be the best way to incorporate yeah. Goku into Super Smash. And that would be massive. Massive. Like people would lose their fucking minds if they put Goku in there. And there, and the reason why I guess they they're not going to put Goku in it or why they say they won't put Goku in it is because okay. he's not originated from a video game franchise. Eh. That's stupid. Yeah, who cares? Who cares? Are there other characters that no, like no. apparently every character in Super Smash Brothers is from a video game franchise. All right. Which I get it. I respect them keeping that, you know, uh, continuity. Sure. And that branding. Yeah. But go ahead, bro. Yeah. At the same time, it's like. It's Goku. Yeah. And at the same time, like, it's Smash Bros. So it's kind of just like. A smorgasbord of yeah, everything. Yeah. Just anybody. You got Solid just Snake cool in there, bro. Shit. Yeah. Night nighting people by. <laughs> yeah. Cracking their neck. And shooting RPGs. What? Yeah. You can't add Goku. Not and not Dracula. and not the Z Goku. Dragon Ball Goku. Yeah. Sun Goku. Yeah. I, definitely. Mm-hmm. He would have the power pole. Yeah. Nimbus would be his up B. Yeah. Uh the, obviously the Kamehameha is the forward B. Or just the B charge. Or just the B beach. Yes. Oh my god. Bam. It's so yep. it's so raw. His Super Smash could be him going, him grow, getting big, going Super Saiyan. Oh, sure. Come here. Or 8 mode. Yeah. 8 mode would be raw. That would be OP. See. <laughs> that would be Nintendo, OP. Nintendo, we it's got so ideas. much to. We got ideas. Yeah. Pay us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, talking about Goku. Yeah. Uh, you watching more Super? Uh, I watched a couple more episodes. Not, okay. Not too many. Not enough to really, you know, delve into. Mm hmm. Um, but we can of course get into your favorite segment of the show. Anime with Trey. You know what time it is. Now, (laughs) uh, while we're in this segment, I'm going to bring up, uh, my mother. Yeah. Big Mama Lou. Big Mama Lou. What it do? Uh, before she watched the this last episode, mm-hmm. she was like, "Hey, before I watch this, are you asking like, are you saying that I am the white Lizzo?" And I was like, "What? Oh, what? Was like, what do you, what do you mean? Oh, because Big Mom, Big Mom. Oh, so she was like, <laughs> you were talk. I saw that you Trey like tweeted or you put on Facebook or something about Big Mom." Being Being the white white Lizzo, and she thought that we were talking about her. No, no, no. I I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) It was very funny. So after we got that cleaned up, that's she was all right to watch the episode. Oh, so if you haven't seen, 
in the last episode of Good and Fresh in the anime with Trey segment, I, I mentioned Big Mom from One Piece. Oh, okay. And he, well, I brought I brought her up on here, and Chuck is like, she's a uh, white Lizzo, cause that's cause he don't know any of these people. He just makes oh. names from based off what he sees. And we, is that no, this is not big. I'll bring up Big Mom right now. Uh, and he like, uh, yeah, that's white Lizzo. I collapsed, bro. It was hilarious. And then, uh, you know, Big Mama Lou, we shout her out all the time. And apparently she thought it was about her. That's hilarious, bro. No, ma. No. We were talking about Charlotte Linlin. Great name. This is Big Mom. AKA White Lizzo. Yeah. Uh But alright, we're gonna get into this anime with Trey, man. You know uh what anime tr- what Trey is, bro. It's the the best part of the motherfucking podcast. You know, uh where I, Trey. Good bring fusion high Charles LaRose. Are we we'd have came out the fat go tanks or something? What would our he's my favorite? The fat go tanks, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I like the fat one. <laughs> or there's like the skinny, like super fucked up one, eh. elderly one, yeah, eh. I like the fat one. <laughs> I like the fat one. Uh, what would our fusion name be? Uh, Mm. Yeah, trails. trails. <laughs> that sounds trails. awful. <laughs> trails. <laughs> Yikes. Trails. That sounds trails terrible. look good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the look good. Okay. Yeah. Trails though. C H R A Y L E S. It could be. Well, no. It could be. Trey. It could be Trey. But it'd be like C H R A Y. It's like Shrey. You see what I'm saying? Shrey. Shrey. Okay. <laughs> We're working on it. We'll workshop it. Che. Che. Oh. That's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. Che look good. It's not bad. I'm, I'm with it. We're workshopping it. I like good it. I like good it. job, team. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so in this segment of. Anime with Trey on the Good and Fresh podcast, sitting in, literally sitting sitting in, Paul Moorhead Jr., sir, a podcast here himself. Want to shout out your podcast? Want, come shout out your podcast before we get into this Good and Fresh real fast. Playoff P. I'll let you get this you space, oh, Paul. Wow. Right. Yeah, yeah. You might not need oh, the headphones. He's, he's moving all over. Wow, now, okay. here's the thing here. Playoff P, you are now Playoff P, is that, is that, on, I like this. You are now on the Good and Fresh podcast. I'm gonna let you know right now. Like you this. are the first guest. You are. so don't so don't fuck this up. You know what? I appreciate that, yep. and the invitation is well received. And in order to fuck it up, I think I'd have to, um, I have to do what I don't normally do, oh, which is okay. to be really, really loud. Show your dick. <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> no, I don't know. If, oh yeah, this where we are recording. This isn't an epic setup. No, I actually saw you from the window downstairs when I was heading home. And I literally just said, <laughs> oh, all right, I'm cool. coming up. <laughs> Sweet. It was like, I'm doors of the church. I could always eat later. Yeah. So I'm here. <laughs> so the podcast, yeah, what, the podcast. What is it? What is it about? So the Free Radicals podcast is entering its second run, season two, episode 16. Damn. Going to nice. be airing in about a week. Um, just released one with Apare, Apare Agyeman. A I'm totally butchering that. We love you, God! Yeah, he's somewhere out there. It's in the Bronx, I think. Yeah, and uh, the podcast is about, it's about numerous things, but mostly surrounds content around spiritual evolution, human development, higher levels of consciousness, and just like up-leveling everything in your life. Mm. And a lot of creativity. We deal with like, it was initially about mostly how spirituality informs creativity and how you get like really amped on that and how they feed each other. But now it's moving more towards the spiritual thing. Nice. So it's a little bit of that. Super dope. Thanks. And then where do you release them? Is it like YouTube? Is I'm on Spotify, Spotify. I'm on iTunes. I'm on all these overcast and podcast 
sites you've never heard of. Right. Yeah. Sure. Oh, and Anchor. I just got on Anchor recently. That nice. That's my main hub right now. Very yeah. solid. Yeah, nice. man. Appreciate it. Nice. Well, shit, bro. I, don't I definitely got to check it out. I've yeah, been, I got to go subscribe. Yeah. Now. I've been on. She, Tri- about to, she about to get a photo, but I've been on the free ride. You have. Twice, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. We've yeah. had met, like technical difficulties with one of them mm-hmm. and or both of them. One of them we been recorded there. in the living room. And and I think it was just like we were too powerful. Yeah. So the, the I'm dead serious because yeah. like the audio would just cut at random times. It would uh. just literally just like we'd go into a dimensional, we'd open an information hole portal <laughs> into reality, and like it would just not be able to record. Yeah. Mm. Couldn't keep up. Mm. The other time it was good though. Yeah. We had that first episode. Yeah. Oh yeah. But we'll do more. Absolutely, we'll do yeah. more. Shit, we gonna have to have you like actually sit in on one of these for sure. I love 100%. that. I love that. This is more official than mine, by the way. Mine's usually at the library because I. Bro, don't. There's no, <laughs> there's no need to prepare, but this bro. is beautiful. I mean, the setup is just. Yeah. You got some serious equipment here. Hey, man. Hey, man. Yeah. Shout out to uh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Well, thanks for the plug. Oh, thank you already. Always. I'll be here. Always. Okay. And it's great to just, you know, have another white person in the room for once. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I'm in here. By your lonesome, you know, you'd you be the, the min- minority. Yep. Colon. Yeah. It'd be melanated. It'd be melanin dominant through this right. motherfucker. Yeah, I think white people are going to become the minority very soon. Yeah, hey, man. Definitely. I, I, how many? How many? Which is great. I, I like that. I think it's important. How many? How many? Our tables do <laughs> tables need to turn. We had like, a good four hundred years. Thousands of years. Yeah. Um but I think like even though that, you know, Caucasians are the majority on the planet, like, how do we really know that for show for show? No, we sure don't. We don't. Africa is enormous. Africa is enormous. Yeah. India is enormous. Like yeah. there's so who and who's keeping tabs of all of these people in these places that aren't necessarily developed? Sure, right? sure. So sure. who's yeah. where are we getting our sources from? That's my question, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chris. What have you been hearing yeah. from the Christians? It's true. Roman Catholic Church still got power. But they they got a whole lot of power. But we this we're not gonna get into that. We are gonna get into this real fast because we can sure. open this motherfucker wide open. Yeah. That's, that's for <laughs> That's for the free radicals. Yeah. But PJM. Uh but uh so anime with Trey back again. So I've been watching hella anime lately. Okay. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. I came in here the other day. You were watching that Ruby show. Oh, sh- I should have put them. some bro. Ruby is raw, bro. It's pretty cool. People don't real anime watchers. Mm-hmm. Saying like I'm not a real anime watcher, but like a lot of real anime watchers don't like Ruby okay. because it doesn't seem like real anime. Because for one, gotcha. it's like 3D, right? So like style, yeah, the style of it was interesting. It's like a I cartoon. Thought. Yep. But it's an anime, like it's created by an Asian guy. All right. Rest in peace or live in light to Monty Ohm, mm-hmm. which great name by the way, mm-hmm. Monty Ohm. Monty Ohm, right. like bro, yeah. and 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 seeing his, <laughs> she did the, uh, the coconuts for Monty Python. Gosh, man, uh, nice, dude. And like seeing that body of work, I can see why he he was pretty much done, bro. Like he did his work, and it's like, all right, mm. come on, let's go to the next one. Gotcha. Um, but uh, yeah. So stop sleeping on Ruby. Mm-hmm. Ruby's raw, and it has great, it has amazing character development, great story. Awesome fight scenes, bro. Yes, it might be a little cartoony, but that shit, I fuck with Ruby the long way. Okay. Oh, I'm fangirling right now. So now, (laughs) I'm going to have to describe who this person is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Starting off with number one. Right. Now, so here's the thing. Clearly, this is some type of firefighter character. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, no idea what they're from. So this is what I'm going to say. This is an anime that is based off, of course, the seminal children's TV show, Paw Patrol, of which 
my nephew really enjoyed. Uh huh. Really enjoyed. Um. So this is the kid, whatever the fuck his name was, Jake or something. Who mm-hmm. gives a shit? And it's him all grown up fighting fires. Yep. With fucking Chase and Marshall and the other ones yeah and uh yeah you know just doing work he's also barefoot for some fucking reason Mm -hmm. but uh probably because oh because you know most of them are dogs right paw patrol exactly the fucking dumbass dogs probably went and tore up his shoes so now he's shoeless fighting fires out here and he's you know he looks like he's like oh shit it's hot you're right exactly (sighs) motherfucking dogs yep this is Shinra okay. Kusakabi okay. from the relatively new anime Fire Force. Okay. The fire on his feet yeah. comes from his feet. Sure, of course. Of course it does. So in the world of Fire Force. Mm-hmm. What, what, what? So the fire comes from his feet. Yeah. So he starts the fire. And then puts and it out. Then puts it out. And he's like, hey, I put it out. Don't worry about it. I'm the hero. But really, he's a fucking arsonist. And just a little bit, a little they call him pyrotechnics. Okay. <laughs> uh <laughs> but in the world of Fire Force, uh there's this there there's an advent where this disease, so to speak, okay. happens where humans spontaneously combust. And they become this thing called infernals. Okay. Fire humans. Cool. And then you have people from the fire force. Right. So they have like eight different divisions of the fire force. Shinra is a part of the eighth. Of course. The best one. The best one. They relatively new. So it's like four people on the squad. Okay. Uh, but um, so you have the fire force come to put them to rest mm. because it's all it's centered around like. Uh, religious philosophy, uh, big corporations. So it's it's a lot of like uh, Illuminati type shit, like mm. going on. Mm. Um, okay. Which they 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 really like unveil. Yeah. Fun, like it's funny as fuck. It's mm-hmm. silly, mm-hmm. but it has very like serious undertones. Mm-hmm. But this the silliness of it definitely makes it. A lot less serious, gotcha. so to speak. Sure. Um, and yo, so like, yeah, he uh, he's a part of Division Eight. I'll probably show more people from Division Eight throughout our tenure here. Sure. Um, but he's like, he's the main character. Okay. Uh, and most people think that he started the fire that killed his mom and his little brother. Okay. But he didn't. No, uh, he, I don't know why they did it. He didn't. He didn't start the fire. He didn't start the fire. It was always burning since the world was turning. Yep. Paul gets it. It's because we're white. Because <laughs> <laughs> I ain't get that shit at all. <laughs> Keep going. Don't worry about uh, it. It's for them. <laughs> it's, for, <laughs> it's for them. Uh, and so, yeah, um, he set out to be a hero. But most people okay. think that he's a yeah. devil. Uh, they call yeah. him a devil, and he has right. like his teeth look like his like he gonna chomp some shit, and he has this like devilish grin, which is like a resting creep face, right. because he'll do it when he tenses up, and so he smiles, and it's like oh this motherfucker looks crazy. Okay, and they think he's crazy. Is this like a new anime, or it's been out and you just found it? Uh, it's it's new. Okay. It 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 been out for like I guess a year now, a year and a half. But okay. the manga is kind of probably new. been out for like two three years. Okay, so still it's fairly, fairly new. new. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, it, it's dope. It's a it's a character on here. She's a girl. She's a girl. Okay. I guess you kind of have to say that now these days. Uh she has this thing where she finds herself in precarious situations. Okay. All the time. Okay. They call it her uh, lucky lecher lore. Okay. I don't know what the fuck that means. Maybe it's like something perverted in like Japanese, mm. where they're just like. I'm a you oh oops you fell and my hand is on your boob or oops you're, sure. you fell on my face or oops right, right. oops you d- got 
picked up by all my tentacles and now they're just going in all sorts of places yeah yeah right. that cool yeah. so it happens to her a lot okay poor thing yeah we're gonna go to this next one okay hmm this guy right here hmm um eh. this picture is not it's not doing a lot for me it's mm. a it's a very bland picture mm. um Oh, uh, so I was trying to find a better picture. Honestly, it's okay. Though. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. No, it did the job. We got it. Okay. This guy is from the again uh, TV show turned into an anime. He is from the Game of Thrones hmm. version of the anime. Hmm. Uh aptly titled Game of Bones. Wow. Because, you know, you know, get a little frisky frisky. You right. I mean, if you made a Game of Thrones anime, it'd probably have to be a hentai because people fucking in that. <laughs> and it's like, I mean, this is going to be an Iowa joke, so for those of you not in Iowa, apologies, but Game of Thrones, a lot of Missouri in that, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> A lot of family fucking family. Yeah. 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 We get it. Yeah. Um, so this is, of course, uh, spoilers for Game of Thrones. The uh, now king of the kingdom? Uh, Bren or whatever the fuck his name is. What's his name? Bron? Bran. Bran. One of those. You guys understand what I'm talking about. Bron. He's that guy. Because... He's just got a little daggers. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like he's going to fuck up too much shit. Mm. And his eyes also have that very scary glossed over look mm. like he can't actually see. So maybe he's blind or a raveny kind of dude or whatever. You're like kind of close. Not okay. really, but a little bit. Okay. This <clears throat> is Thorfinn. Thorfinn. Thor. Thorfinn. Okay. Thorfinn. Like, that's the, his That's name. his name. Thorfinn. Thorfinn. All right. Son cool. of Got it. Thor's the troll. Sure. Thor the troll. Thor's with an S. Okay. Thor's. Sure. From the anime Vinland Saga. Okay. Vinland Saga is, pre is set like, a his I think it's like a historical telling, but like, with these characters that probably have no touching into the history. Loosely based, Loosely based. on a real event. Right. Okay. Where it goes from uh, Denmark okay. waging war through England and things of this nature. Gotcha. Okay. Um, It's actually pretty like historically informative and shit. Sure. It's a little bit. Yeah. Um, But Thorfinn, right? Yep. His dad, Thor's strongest man ever. Right. Right. Troll. Ever. And ironically enough, he was a melanated man, made a melanated man with black hair. His wife was Helga, so they had two blonde, blue-eyed, well, not blue-eyed kids, but two blonde hit, blonde kids, blah blah. blah. Sure. So okay, you know, yeah. we, we don't we don't question that. Right. Um. But anyway, so his pops, at the I don't want to tell you, but his pops gives up the life of being a, a warrior, sure. like they're Vikings. Right. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Um. But he gives it up. He's like, bro, I'm just done. Uh, and then he just goes away and then he has, <laughs> he, he goes away and then he ends up like having a family. Gotcha. And, uh, he's then found 15 years after a particular, like the, like the beginning of the show, like the first episode, mm -hmm. 15 years pass. He has a whole family. He's been, he deserted them during war. Like he left. Okay. And so they find him. Like his his right hand man's finds him. He's like, "Yo, we need you to be back in this war because we about to go to war." Blah blah. And he's like, "Bro, I don't, I don't, I'm don't, I don't war no more, bro. I ain't about that life." Right. He was like, "Listen, you deserted us. Mm. We could be here murking you, mm. but since you are the strongest of us all, mm. the king wants you. And okay. this is not up for debate because if you say no, we slaughtering your whole village. Okay. So dog has to go." Off to war and bring he brings like five young cats from this village. But at this time, Thorfinn is like six, seven, right? Okay. 
This motherfucker stows away on the ship. Long story short, he ends up like they get they get ambushed. It's a setup. Okay. And Thor's puts on a hell of a show. Hell of a show. Beating everybody ass. Mm -hmm. Barehanded though. Everybody else got axes, knives, all types of shit. He just in that bitch one hitting, knock at one hit KO everybody. Just Iron Mike Tyson and people yes. out here. Okay. And not killing anybody though. Uh, he's reached a state of zen, bro. Uh, he's there. He's like, listen, I don't want to have to put the paws on you. Gotcha. But if I'm gonna put the paws on the, you, the Batman technique. Yeah. Gotcha. And so he does all that, and then the dude. It's like, look, I can't let you go because there's a bounty on your head. Okay. They end up killing, bro, in front of Thorfinn. Oh, no. Thorfinn is fucked up. Sure. And, like, in that moment, like, you got, I'm telling you the whole thing, but when you see it, it's going to be like, damn, that's kind of fucked up. Because it's a beautiful anime. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. But ironically enough, so he stows away on the ship because they take his father's ship. It's like pirates who ambush him. Sure. They they take his father's ship, so he stores away on it, and he's like, "I'm a fucking kill you, right? I'm going to kill you. Yep, I'm going to kill you." Yep. So he ends up like becoming a part of this pirate crew, right? But not being a part of it. Sure. But the whole time he's just getting better and better at like becoming a fucking killer, right? Merkin, so that he can challenge this dude named Askelad. Great name. Who's the pirate leader okay who ordered the hit on his dad hmm. um it's it, it's vinland saga is a dope anime sounds cool <laughs> now i said it was game of thrones it sounds honestly more like the viking show that's on amazon which is basically game of thrones but vikings i haven't seen it it's great yeah yeah i like it a lot you might want to check this one out maybe maybe and it starts off dope Okay, Bro. and Heads a lot of Vikings, off. a lot of Norwegian lore and stuff ties into one of our favorite games, God of War. Mm. They do talk about Christianity and Norse gods in this. Sure. Which I found funny because they like they they be clowning Christians, bro. Oh yeah. They be clowning Christians. Yeah, Vikings weren't uh, weren't big on the old Christianity. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. It was like look, they saw they saw an image, a crucifix of Jesus. Okay. And it was like. He was so fucking puny. <laughs> Shit. Yep. Uh, but yeah, man. So uh, Thorfinn from Vinland Saga. Vinland Saga. Cool. If you haven't, if you haven't watched Vinland Saga, I, I highly recommend it to everybody watching. Uh, you too, Sir Paul. Um. Yeah, I, I fucking bet. Um, and then when this is the last. Oh yeah, this is the last one. This is the last one for anime with Trey. It's actually one of my favorite characters in the anime universe. Oh, I got two pictures up just to throw you off, by the way. It's, it's one on that you're looking at right now, but then I'm okay. going to show you another one. Of the same person? Of the same character, yeah. Will you show me that one? Nope. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> well, shit. Shit. I'll give you one thing. Okay. He's from Hunter Hunter. He. That's all I needed. Ah. <laughs> um, I, I okay. can't tell you. So he is from. We already brought up his Hunter Hunter. Hunter. Last one. You got it. Cool. Hunter Hunter. Okay. And it's a he. Yep. So his name is going to be Stanley. And <laughs> Stanley, uh, here's the thing about Stanley. He's he's a weird one, all right? He is. Uh, he, the thing with him Stanley. is that when he goes to school, uh-huh. Uh, you know how you would usually you would you'd get the milk cartons, yeah, 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 in a little crate, and then you would have to open it, and it was just the carton. He gets a cup mm -hmm. or a bowl, mm -hmm. 
probably a bowl because you know anime mm-hmm. so he he eats all of his soup super fast nom 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 mm-hmm. then he uses the bowl pours the milk in there and then he does a little cat tongue a little and then he he licks up the milk out of the bowl so they call uh, him, they call him cat boy cat boy but his real name is stanley oh that's cute yep. i like that that, that i could see that happening mm-hmm. uh his name is kill kill killua Okay. Killua Zoldick. Okay. He's an assassin. Uh, Doesn't look like one. I bet it doesn't. Yep. Uh, Killua Zoldick, an assassin from a family of assassins. He's what, 13? 13 years old. Just murking people. Murking people. Solid. Uh, Way to go, parental units. This is... Yeah, oh, absolutely. Thanks, thanks. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, if you showed me this picture, it literally wouldn't have helped me whatsoever. No, no. Cool. Honestly, my biggest thing was I was trying to decide if it was a girl or a boy. Ah, yeah. yeah I was like, nah. Oof, that's yeah, up in nah. the air. So no, Kill is uh the second protagonist within the Hunter Hunter like universe. Okay, it's him and someone else uh, that okay. I haven't brought up yet. Okay. Uh, and like, he's my guy, bro. Like he's from a family of assassins. Yep. He doesn't have any friends until he makes the one friend that he has, which is the protagonist. Right. And a couple of other people. Now it's because he laps up his milk at school. Yeah. So then the one friend had to come over and be like, Hey Hey. man, what's going on? Yeah. 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 These niggas don't go to school. They're hunters, bro. Okay, maybe they go to fucking hunter school. I don't fucking know. Yeah, maybe they could. Uh, he um, in the in the realm of hunter hunter, mm-hmm. like their energy system is Nin. He's a okay. manipulate. Like so, Nin is like how how would you express explain what Nin is? Nin is like. The chakra system. Gotcha. Okay. In it's, it's your chi. It's your aura sure. type. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And they have like six different aura types. Okay. Like like human design almost. Okay. Uh, and he happens to be a manipulator, so he can manipulate energy and like people, kinda. Okay. To do certain, he can change it. And uh, I see. And his like he has an affinity with electricity. Uh huh. And he like activates this mo- mode called Godspeed. Great name. Okay. I fuck with it. Yeah. He, so he's like Flash or something. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Okay. Exactly like Flash. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I like him, bro. He's 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 dark, mm-hmm. but he's very light. And his friend makes him more light like. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. And he over he has he's like super raw, but then he also has like this this uh impending fear within himself. Okay. But that he eventually overcomes. But it was literally implanted in him. So he wouldn't do things that wasn't beyond what he thought he could do. So it was like a fear of failure. Fear he had a fear fear of failure and fear fear of success. Mm. That was implanted in him. And then he got it out and then he that's what helped him get his God speed. Cool. Things like that. Well, but yeah man, so that's anime with Trey. Sweet. I know that you want to get up out of here soon. Yeah, because you gotta go. You gotta watch. You got a game to go watch. I do. Yeah, commemorating. Yep. The legacy. Yeah. Of the legend. Yep. The Black Mamba. Yes. Um. No, it's fine. Keep going. Oh. Um. But yeah, that that was it, bro. Like that was okay. anime with Trey. Yeah. Um. We did that. Sweet. What else? I think that's it. Shit. Yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. Um. This has been a whirlwind of an episode. So it has. I didn't get into one thing, and I wanted to bring it up at the beginning, but then I I forgot about it. So mm-hmm. you touching on, of course, the great Kobe Bryant brings mm-hmm. it all back, as we do around this motherfucker. Yeah. Um, I wanted to bring up like how the NBA could honor Kobe ah. and his legacy. Yeah, I seen your tweet, bro. That, that yes. makes all the sense. Pay yeah. this man. So. I had a few ideas. Um, I will need to bring up that tweet because I don't remember them all that much, honestly. Um, But 
I was trying to think of certain ways where they could honor him, but still not like step on toes because the NBA is very good <clears throat> at honoring a lot of their great players or, you know, people who had uh, came before and whatnot. Um, so one of my ideas was, uh, of course, with the, uh, the all-star game coming up, mm-hmm. uh, happening on Valentine's weekend, the 14th, 15th, 16th, um, they just call it like the NBA all-star game, Mm -hmm. but it's not like actually branded as anything. So, uh, my idea was to rebrand it and have it called the Kobe Bryant all-star game. Now, some people on Twitter, I kind of, you know, meshed the ideas together, but some people I did see on Twitter saying that for this year's All-Star game, at least, um, what they do is they have, like, two different teams. So it used to be, like, East versus West. Mm -hmm. Now it's, like... Eight versus 24? No. Now it's, like, whoever gets the most votes in each conference Mm -hmm. becomes captains. So for the West this year, you have LeBron. Right. And then in the East, you have Giannis. So they they are the captains. And then the rest gets all decided by votes and things like that. And then they go in and they like do a fantasy draft basically where they draft their their teams. Right. So you have Team LeBron and you have Team Giannis. So what people have thought and what I think is a fantastic idea is to have one of the teams where everyone on the entire team wears number eight mm-hmm. and then on the other team everyone wears twenty four. Mm. Now, you can do that in the All-Star game because it doesn't fucking matter. Right. Um, But I think that would be super awesome, at least for this year. Of course, not every year because, you know, you want to have players wear their own stuff and be branded their own way. Yeah. I think that would be awesome. Um, The other one that I had was uh, that he becomes the new NBA logo. Yeah, I've I've seen that a couple of times. That's a big one um, because the NBA logo right now is Jerry West. Jerry West still alive. Um, another Laker great, like, fantastic player. Wonderful in his post-playing career. Yeah. Um, still does a whole bunch of stuff with the NBA, a whole bunch of stuff with the Lakers. Um, still really active in the community. It would be hard to do, but I think because of him still being alive and him being a Laker great and like being with the team and understanding what Kobe means to the NBA and Mm -hmm. to the legacy of the sport Mm -hmm. and to the Lakers. Go ahead and pass that torch, pass that torch. Like it's time we've talked about having a new NBA logo for quite a while. Like if it's going to be anyone, it gotta be that Kobe. Like, it would have to be Kobe. Yeah. And it's crazy because, like, you just you said shit Jerry West. I thought dude was definitely not about to be embodied, but he's still out here kicking. Like, it's yeah. not too many. Like, when you think about it, it's not too many, like, NBA players that have, like, passed away. Not really, no. That, I mean, on that level of, like, Right, on that huge them. level. Yeah, like, the only one who is, like, larger than life is, like, uh, Wilt Chamberlain, you know? Oh yeah, like he holds basically every single NBA record. Right. So like, Wilt Chamberlain would be that dude. But I mean, he's kind of like already immortalized, just like and that, as a player. And that was like at a different time too, because like definitely the 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 league has been yeah. impacting so much more since right, that time. Right, way different. Yeah. yeah, but he, you know, again. Even with Wilt, like, he did a whole bunch of stuff off the court, things like that. But, like, Wilt is more just, like, historic. Like, how? How is, like, there's records that he has that will never even come close to being touched again. That's crazy. Not even remotely close. Um, And then you have people like, you know, like, Wilt did a whole bunch of battles with, of course, the great Bill Russell. Bill Russell. Man, still, still living life. Yeah, he's just out here. But Bill Russell, they have the NBA Finals. Um, the NBA Finals MVP mm-hmm. is like the Bill Russell's 
like NBA Finals MVP. Ah. So they already have something named after him. So I was like, can't take away from the great Bill Russell. No. Respect to him. Absolutely. Um, so I was trying to think of like what they could have where you could put Kobe's name on it, mm. where it would be some type of award or something that you could give to a player. But as I was thinking about this, I was like, you know, there's a lot of people in there. You know, you have the Larry O'Brien trophy, but Larry O'Brien was like the first NBA commissioner, basically. And he did a whole bunch of stuff for the sport, got it like on TV, got like TV rights, got players paid, all sorts of stuff. Like Nice. Like he's fundamental, so you really can't take away from that like trophy, you know. I was like, you know, what else could you do? Hall of Fame, but like it's the John Naismith Hall of Fame. Like dude created the sport, can't really take away from that, you know. Right. So me and my friends, Josh, Dustin, Chris, uh, we were kind of brainstorming an idea one day about basically the NBA has a MVP trophy mm-hmm. and then they have yearly awards. So they have rookie of the year, um, defensive player of the year, six man of the year, all sorts of things like this. What they don't have and what I think is uh, would be more in line nowadays and that people would still respect is to have like an offensive player of the year Mm. because offense in today's NBA is like unbelievably important. Like, and it still wouldn't take away from the MVP because the MVP is kind of that award right now, right? which it shouldn't be. Because the MVP is the most valuable player. Right. And a lot of the time, it's not that. It's just the person who's putting up the most ridiculous points, yeah. stats or whatever the case may be. So I think what they should do is they should have an MVP player, um, which is the um, Maurice Poloff, I think, is the MVP. Uh, I don't remember what the defensive player of the year, like who it's named after or whatnot. But I think they should have a Kobe Bryant Offensive Player of the Year and then have that as a yearly award that a player can win. I like it. Yeah, especially now that the NBA is doing like their huge big award show thing that they're pushing where everyone comes up with their yearly awards, which it's fine, but don't do it for the MVP because they need to have like that moment and do their whole speech and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. Okay, well shit. I hope the NBA NBA nice. NBA takes heed to your ideas and the, yeah. and the ideas that are definitely percolating in the Twitterverse. Yeah. And I think they will. Mm-hmm. You know, I think you know, they'll do it in their own way or whatnot, but they'll definitely uh for sure recognize him. And he's up for uh he was up for the Hall of Fame this year. He's in there. As like yeah, I mean he's gonna be a first ballot regardless, but I'm sure they're gonna really show out for, oh yeah, that ceremony. Yeah, absolutely. And do a whole bunch of cool stuff. Absolutely. Yep. Well, shit, man. Long live Mamba mentality. Eight yeah. twenty four twenty four eight. Yeah. Uh, oh, that was another one. Every what? August twenty fourth, Kobe Day. Kobe I mean, Day. it's not like in the NBA calendar. Because it's in Day. August, but Kobe Day. Kobe Day, bro. I'm with it. Yep. Kobe. Um, what will Kobe do? Keep that energy. That's 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 that was the thing that I wanted to tell people. Like, yo, make sure that you take on that energy. Yep. That impacted your life. Yep. And um, before we get up out of here, I'm gonna go ahead and say that you are creating an imagination of the creator to create all of creation. That you are one of one, replaceable by none. A product of perfection perpetually being perfected. So there is no competition and no comparison. Just simply be greater than ever.com. And where you can go to not only support the movement, but to support the message and be a billboard for being. You can get yourself, I believe in myself, be greater than ever OG gear. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, God is the greatest. Make humanity great again. I ain't even talking about the Andrew Yang shit. Because I I was sat in on Andrew Yang. Oh, right. Uh, Write it down as a note. Next episode. Boop. Next episode, I'm going to talk about Andrew Yang. Um, Go caucus. Definitely go caucus. If you're in Iowa, make sure you go caucus. I can't tell you who to go caucus for, but you should know who who I'm caucusing for. The gang. February 3rd, caucus for whoever you caucus for. Mm -hmm. Andrew Yang. Gang, gang. Gang, gang, gang. Anyway, man, my name is Trey Good. One half of this dynamic duo, along with Charles LaRose, a.k.a. Chucky Fresh. And this has been the first ever episode. Episode. First ever episode. The no, first, you're right. That was right. Yeah, you were trying to do it like I do it, and you just, you know, kind of flubbed it around, but it's fine. I said Nakers. Yeah, nice. Good one. <laughs> Cut her some slack, bro. You know, please. Look, like, no, for real. Like, I'm. I heard Nakers. Like, I heard it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody else is losing their fucking mind. Right. She should be fired. Blah, blah, blah. That's a whole other conversation. Yeah. But may the God and Goddess and you all be blessed. Thank you for tuning yes. in with us each and every week. Mm-hmm. Join our Patreon, or just find us on Mondays on YouTube.com or in our Facebook. Yep. Peace. Live in light to the great Kobe Bryant. The great. Gianna Bryant. Um, love each other. Never forget what he stood for. That he was a great man, a great basketball player, but most importantly, a great father. Um, Mamba mentality forever. And uh, I gotta go watch Bean play. Go watch Bean play, bro. Get up out of here. Woo. What would Kobe do? Ball on you motherfuckers. That's what he would. That's what we gonna do. 2020. Peace.